Uniswap is exploding, its trading volume is growing exponentially and it's already larger than a couple of big centralized exchanges. So if you are a blockchain developer, you need to become familiar with Uniswap. So in this video, I will explain what is Uniswap, how it works and how to interact with it in JavaScript using the Uniswap SDK and also how to interact with Uniswap from a spot contract using Solidity. And I will focus on Uniswap V2, the latest version, so this video is up to date. If you don't know me, I'm Julian and on my channel Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain development and how to find your first blockchain job. And before we continue, quick announcement, I'm working on a new course on advanced Solidity, so that's a great way to specialize your and stand out from other blockchain developers. If you want to get informed when it comes out and receive some exclusive preview, register with the link down below. So what is Uniswap and how does it work? So Uniswap is a decentralized exchange for ERC20 tokens. You can buy and sell ERC20 tokens in a decentralized way using a smart contract on Ethereum. This is not the first decentralized exchange. And what is different with Uniswap is that under the hood, it uses a liquidity pool. So that means you don't trade directly with any specific trader but instead you go through this sort of intermediary concept of the liquidity pool. And that's a mechanism that significantly improved the liquidity of the exchange. So we're gonna see the different smart contract of Uniswap. So first we have the factory. So the role of the factory is to create the different market of Uniswap and act as a registry for all these different markets. Each bucket is represented by another smart contract that we call the pair smart contract. And so in each pair, you have two tokens, for example, DAI and Wrap Ether or USDC and Wrap Ether. Then you have the router smart contract, which is a utility that helps you to use Uniswap in a most simple way. And finally, there are all the different ES20 smart contracts that are manipulated by Uniswap, but these aren't strictly part of Uniswap. Uniswap just interact with all these tokens. So now we're going to see how these smart contracts interact with each other. So first, as I said before, the factory can create different pair smart contract. So we can have pair smart contract with any combination. So it can be two token, like for example, that and SNX, or it can be a token and wrap ether. So if you never heard of Wrap Ether, that is basically an ERC20 token version of Ether. So that's a token where inside you have that is backed by Ether. So one Wrap Ether token equal one Ether. So in Uniswap V1, we were able to create some market with Ether, but in V2, we can only create pair with Wrap Ether. Anybody can create a new pair. This is a permissionless system. All you have to do is to call the factory spot contract with the correct parameter. So next, I'm going to explain how we can interact with a pair spot contract. So one kind of actor is called a liquidity provider. So a liquidity provider can be anybody who has some tokens and who want to act as a market maker for a specific market. So as a liquidity provider, you will send a combination of the two tokens of the pair. So for example, if the pair is DAI and wrap ether, so you will send the same value of DAI and wrap ether to the spot contract. And in exchange, you get what is called a liquidity provider token. And at any time in the future, you can redeem your liquidity provider token against the DAI and wrap ether token that you initially provided. Plus, you're also going to get the trading fee that were earned by the pair spot contract in the meantime. So next, if you are a trader and you want to buy some wrap ether with this pair spot contract, what you're going to do is you're going to send some wrap ether to the spot contract of the pair plus the trading fee. And in exchange, you're going to get the DAI tokens. So it can be a bit tricky to interact directly with a pair spot contract. So that's why the team of Uniswap created another spot contract called a router that can be used as a convenience in order to interact with the pair contract. So if you are building your own system around Uniswap, it's recommended that you use the router spot contract instead of directly interfacing with pair contracts. But in some rare cases, if you really need more flexibility, that's when you would directly interact with the pair contract. Another advantage of using a router contract is that you can have some complex trading. For example, let's say that we have 
two pairs, so DAI wrap Ether and USDC wrap Ether. But what we want to do is to trade between DAI and USDC, but in the system you can see that we don't have this market. Well, we can specify a route to the router smart contract. So in the route, we will first use the DAI wrap Ether pair and then the USDC wrap Ether pair. And so that way we can synthetically create the DAI USDC market. And another advantage of using the router is that you can use Ether in order to trade on Uniswap and the router will automatically convert back and forth between Ether and Wrap Ether. Otherwise, if you trade directly with the pair, you have to take care of yourself of wrapping your Ether into a Wrap Ether token first. Okay, so that's it for the high level overview of Uniswap. Next, I'm going to show you how you can use JavaScript to interact with the Uniswap smart contract using the Uniswap SDK. section I'm going to show you how you can interact with Uniswap with JavaScript using the Uniswap SDK which is a JavaScript library created by Uniswap. So this is what we call an isomorphic library that means you can use it on the front end in web browser or on the back end with Node.js. So there is one thing a little bit confusing, even though this is for Uniswap v2, actually the version of the library is Uniswap SDK v3. So I'm going to show you how you can use it from Node.js, but it's very similar if you want to use it from the front end. So here I am in my terminal. I'm going to initiate an NPM project like this. And after I'm going to install the Uniswap SDK like this at Uniswap slash SDK. So now if you check out what we have in package.json and in dependency, we have Uniswap SDK here, all right. So I'm gonna create a file. So we need to import a couple of stuff from Uniswap. So first we're gonna import the chain ID to identify which blockchain we want to interact with. And then an object called the Fetcher. I'm going to show you how it works after and we require this from Uniswap SDK. So for the front end, you need to change the syntax with import from as you would do with any ES6 module. So next we're going to define the chain ID. We're going to select mainnet. And after for the token address, we're going to take the address of dice already copy pasted it from Etherscan. And after I'm going to create a pointer to the die token. So for this, you need to use the await keyword. And by the way, if we use the await keyword, we need to wrap everything into a function. Otherwise, Node.js is not going to be super happy. All right. And so now with the fetcher object, we're going to fetch the token data and we specify the chain ID and the token address. And now with this object, we can represent the die token in Uniswap. There is another way to initialize token object without using this fetcher object but this is a little bit more verbose, so I prefer this way. Also, by default, when you use this notation here, it's going to use the default provider defined by Ether.js, so in other terms, it's going to connect to mainnet, but you can change this by passing it a Ether.js provider. So next, we're gonna create a pair object. Pair object allows to interact with a specific market. So, with a specific market, we're gonna need two tokens. So we have DAI already. And for the other one, we're gonna choose wrap ether. So we can actually get this from the Uniswap SDK here. So let's do it. And after we need to select the right network. So wrap ether of chain ID. And after we're gonna define our pair object like this. Once again, we're gonna use the fetcher object, fetch pair data. And 
we give it the two token we want die and wrap ether so here the order doesn't have any importance could be wrap ether die or die wrap ether this is the same pair and we close this and now we can interact with this pair so like before it's also possible to instantiate this pair object in a more manual way without using fetcher but this is a little bit more verbose so i prefer this way and next we're going to create a rot object and with this rot object we'll finally be able to do something interesting we create a new rot object like this new route oh, by the way i have to import it here and we're going to pass an array with the different pair that we want to use in our route. So in our case, we just want to use a single pair. But if you want to access markets that don't directly exist, like I explained in the previous section, then you will pass several elements in this array. And after you will put here the input token. So for us, that's going to be wrap ether. And so now we're going to be able to get the mid price. So console log rod mid price. So this is going to return a token amount object. So this is a custom object created by Uniswap, but under the hood, it uses JSBI, which is JavaScript library to manipulate big number. And so one method we can use is to significant. This is going to transform this into an actual number we can represent. Actually, this is going to be a, a string to be exact. So we want six significant digit right in. We're going to get the number of die token that we can get with one wrap ether. But if you want the opposite price, what you can do is use the invert method here. All right. Oh, and I just realized there's a typo here. Let me remove the D. All right, save this. And let's try to run this. Mm hmm. It cannot find this module. Okay, so let's try to fix this by installing npm install ethers. So this is probably a peer dependency that I had to install. All right, so now node index and this time is it going to work yes currently for one ether we can get 411 die and here we have the invert price so this is working well so the missing instruction in the documentation of uniswap sdk was that i had to install ether like this Okay, so we're gonna return to our script. And so the price I show you here is the mid price. So that's a theoretical price that you will actually never get if you buy or if you sell the token. What you'll actually get is the execution price. So to get this execution price, we need something else. So to get this execution price, we need to build a trade. And for that, first we need to import a few extra stuff. So first we're gonna import a trade object, a token amount and a trade type. Okay, and after here, we're gonna create this trade, new trade, and we're going to pass it the route we defined before and we need to specify a token amount that we want to trade so here first we pass a pointer to the token so wrap token and let's say that we want to provide 100 ether in input so we specify this here as a string so 100 and then we need 15 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 okay then we specify the trade type exact input so that means that we provide exactly this amount in input and we want to get as much possible die as output that's probably the trade type that you're going to use the most often and so after we're going to console log trade dot execution price to significant 
and after we can also print the next mid price after this trade so just to be clear here we are, we're not actually sending any transaction to the ethereum blockchain we're just asking uniswap hey uniswap if i trade this amount of token what would be the execution price and what would be the next mid price that's it and i think we have a problem of parentheses here we are missing a parentheses here okay so let's save this let's run the script and we can see that the execution price will be slightly worse than the mid price and also after the trade the mid price is going down so that's normal so next how can we actually send this transaction to the ethereum blockchain so for that we're going to have a look at the solidity code of the router contract of uniswap and we need to provide a couple of arguments so first we need to provide the minimum amount of output token that we want then an array of the addresses for the different token we're going to go through so in our case it's going to be wrap ether and die then the recipient address and finally the deadline after which the trade order is not valid anymore so we are going to prepare all these parameters so let's go back to our script so first we're going to import another object from uniswap that's called person that's going to allow us to define a tolerance for our trade that's going to be useful for specifying how much tokens we want in output so let's define this parameter here sleepage tolerance so let's say that our tolerance is half a percent so that means compared to the price the execution price we got from the trade we are willing to tolerate a price that is up to 0.5 percent worst so we express this like this 50 and here 10,000. so this is going to be 50 bips so bips is a unit that is commonly used in finance one bip equal 0.001 percent so 50 bip that's basically 0 0.050 so that's 0 0.5 percent you can also specify percent directly if you want like if you wanted to do one percent then you would specify like this but here since we want to do less than one percent then we need to have a bigger number here so now we can define the minimum amount as output and we can use the trade object that we built before so dot minimum amount out and we pass our sleepage tolerance and this is going to give us a token amount but this is not the format that we want we want the raw format so that's going to be a string next we specify the paths of the trades that's going to be an array of addresses so first the address of wrap ether and then the address of die so then the address of the recipient that should be checksum then we need then we need the deadline so this is a timestamp in second so we divide this by 1000 because date dot now give us a timestamp but in millisecond and after that we're going to add for example 20 minutes but it's up to you here to define what's your tolerance here basically the longer you wait the more the market will move in a certain direction and the more the price that you specify might be wrong so it becomes more risky and after we're going to specify how much ether we are willing to send so that's going to be trade.inputamount.row and now we need to create this transaction so the uniswap sdk only allow you to read data from uniswap but not to send transactions so we're going to need another library and we're going to use ethers so we've already installed ethers before so we can require it directly and then below we're going to create an ethers provider so that represents a connection to the ethereum blockchain get default provider so we specify we want mainnet then 
we're going to specify the connection string on infra so we're not going to run an ethereum node ourselves. that's too difficult we're going to use the infra service so you go to the website of infra you create a free account you log in after you go to your ethereum dashboard and you click on create new project so i've already reached the maximum for free account but after you will see your project appearing here so you click on it and in settings then you will take the https url you make sure you are on mainnet then you specify your url here and after you're going to create a signer object it's a new ethers wallet with an uppercase w and so here you're going to specify your private key and after you're going to connect the provider to the signer like this so with this you'll be able to send a transaction and after you need to build an object that represents the smart contract of uniswap ethers.contract with an uppercase c okay and after you're going to need the address and the abi of the router smart contract so for that you go to the website of uniswap you go to the doc click on smart contract router 02 so that's this address so back to the terminal this is the first parameter here and after you need the abi and after i don't find the abi here but that's okay because we can do something more simple with ether so what we need is swap exact if for tokens yeah that's the function that oh no this one yes yeah, swap exact if for token so we copy this and after we're gonna pass an array with the different function we want to use so in our case we just want to use a single one let me put everything on the same line so ethers has something very nice which is called human readable abi so you can basically pass an array like this and you can build the abi yourself very easily let's remove this here okay so now we have the abi and finally we're going to pass the account so now with the uniswap object we can send transaction to the ethereum blockchain so now you can send a transaction like this uniswap dot send exact if for tokens so here we have the oh, uniswap there's a typo here so first we need amount out mean then the path then the recipient address then the deadline and after that we're going to configure the transaction so we're going to pass this value of ether well actually with modern version of javascript you don't need to repeat the key and the value so we can use this notation instead that's the same thing and we need to specify the gas price so for example 20 gray this is probably not going to be enough but you can check out isgasstation.info otherwise there is also a method with ethers to have this programmatically okay so at this point the transaction was not mine it was just sent to the network so here you can console log the transaction hash if you want And after, if you want to wait for the transaction to be mine, you're going to wait for the receipt. You use the transaction object we got from before. And now you can know in which block it was mine. Transaction was mine in block. Receipt dot block number okay great so now you know how to interact with uniswap using javascript and the uniswap sdk and you even know how to send a transaction by combining combining uniswap sdk and ethers so in the next section i'm going to show you how you can interact with uniswap but from a smart contract in solidity 
So in this section, I'm going to show you how we can interact with Uniswap from a smart contract in Solidity. We're going to build a function that allows us to buy some Ether with tokens. Here, I'm in Remix, the online ID for Solidity. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call this my DeFi project. And I'm using Solidity 0.7. So I'm going to start with the pragma statement as usual. And first, I'm going to define an interface for the router contract of Uniswap. So for that, I'm going to do a GitHub repo of Uniswap in Uniswap v2 periphery. That's where we're going to find the router smart contract. It's important to note that this is a different repo from the repo where you will find the pair smart contract. The pair contract are in another repo called core, so periphery is different. Then we go in contracts, then here we'll see the router, so we'll go in router 02. And we're not going to copy everything because we only need one function. So we need the function swap exact tokens for ether here so we're gonna copy this go back to remix and we're gonna copy this i'm gonna format it a little bit so that it's a little bit more readable so in the previous section we used a similar function but that was the country that was swap exact eth for token so here the parameters are very very similar to what we had before but this time we also have to specify the amount in so that's the amount of token we're going to send so let me clean up here the function signature because we don't need everything okay so and we're going to go back to the github repo of uniswap because we need another thing in we're going to need another function signature here in router zero one that's this function here it returned the address of wrap ether okay so next we need another interface for erc20 token so we're going to take the one of open zippling so that's a very popular library for solidity i'm in the github repo i go in contracts token erc20 i Yes, 20 and we're going to copy transfer from here okay so now we're good with the interfaces and now we're going to create our smart contract my DeFi project so we're going to create a pointer to uniswap with i uniswap we call this uniswap and then in a constructor, we are going to pass it the address of the router of Uniswap. So this is Solidity 0.7. So we don't need the public keyword here. That was only up to Solidity 0.6. So here we initialize our pointer very easily like this. We pass it the address. Okay. And after we're going to create our main function to swap tokens for ETH first we find the address of the token and after the amount of token that we're going to provide in input then the amount of ether that the minimum amount of ether that we want and then the deadline after which the trade is not valid anymore. So first we need to move the tokens from the sending address to the spot contract. So for that, we create a pointer to the token. Then we use a transfer from function. We transfer it from the sender to the address of this contract. And for the amount, that's gonna be amount in so that means that before you call this function with the, this MSG sender, you need to call approve on the ES20 token that you want to send. Then we need to build the arguments for the swap exact token for ETH. So 
here first we're gonna build these passes that is the two tokens that we want to trade so that's an array of addresses of length two oops that's the contrary okay like this now for the first element of the pass that's our token the second element is wrap ether so here we can use the uniswap contract it's going to return us the address of wrap ether like this and now we can call the function of uniswap swap exact token for ETH so the first argument is the amount of token we're going to provide so amount in then amount out means so that's the minimum amount of ethers as output then the path then the sender the recipient so that's going to be msg sender so the ether is going to be sent directly to the sender of the transaction it's not going to stay on our contract and the deadline and i realized that i forgot an operation here because before we call the swap exact token function from uniswap we need to approve uniswap to spend our token because at this stage the token are inside our contract and uniswap is going to try to pull the token to his contract but it's not going to work unless we approve it so for that we're going to need an extra line of code so here we're going to approve the address of uniswap to spend amount in and here we will need to add this function to the signature of the, our interface here so i'm back in the interface of open zippling let's scroll up i'm going to copy this function approve okay and so now we are able to exchange tokens against ethereum by using uniswap how can you decide all these different parameters well for the tokens that's the token that you want to spend so that's up to you the deadline that's basically your tolerance for how long you want to keep the, the basically the implied price that you give with these two parameters so for this parameter that's basically how much ether you want to buy and amount in that's how much token you're willing to spend to buy this ether so you can reuse the example that i gave in the previous section with uniswap sdk in order to calculate these parameters it's also important to know that it's quite dangerous to try to evaluate the current price inside our function here in solidity because it's very easy for someone to manipulate the price on chain so you really need to evaluate the correct market price off chain by using the uniswap sdk and if you really can't do it off chain but you have to do it on chain then you need to build your own oracle smart contract that cannot be manipulated by other people basically at the end of each block you will update this oracle smart contract with the price of uniswap at the end of the previous block so there are many variations of this function here exact tokens against is exact if again token you have exact tokens against tokens and if you want to have the full list then you go to the official documentation of uniswap in router 02 and here you will see all the different version of this swap function there are also some other cool stuff that you can do with uniswap such as flash loans they call this flash swap so i probably will cover this in another video so now you became familiar with Uniswap. You know how it works, you know how to interact with it from JavaScript and also from a Solidity smart contract. So what do you do with this knowledge? Well, one thing you could try is build a dashboard that shows the price of the different market of Uniswap. Another idea is to combine your knowledge of Uniswap with Flash Loan to try to do some arbitrage between uniswap and other decentralized exchanges and if you're interested in this i have a full playlist on flash loan on my channel and also if you want to keep learning about other DeFi protocol on ethereum i also have a series on this i'll see you there